All right, guys, so welcome back. This is uh, part five of your uh, PowerPoint certification practice. And um, we're gonna be working in the project called Niagara Falls Project. So if you haven't downloaded that yet, please go ahead and go to your OneDrive and go ahead and download Niagara Falls. You know, I've also gone through some of this stuff as I'm recording these videos and I've updated it. So if your version, <clears throat> excuse me again, doesn't look like the version um, that I'm opening up. And maybe try re-downloading it, especially if you downloaded it like last night or as soon as I sent the email, because I have updated some of these because I've noticed little errors and things like that. You know, I'm pretty obsessive about these things. Let's just get going here. We have three slides here with Niagara Falls. All right, uh, this is number 36. On slide two, apply the moderate effect pink accent five style to the heart shape. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the heart shape. <clears throat> we're gonna go to drawing tools format tab. The shape styles are in some kind of an order that they're not just kind of like random. If you notice over here, like this is subtle. I think this is moderate. This is intense right here. <clears throat> and we're looking for moderate effect pink accent five. All right, which is this one right here. I know it doesn't look pink. Don't judge me. On slide three, <clears throat> we have a table here, right? It says, delete the column with the heading rank. Add a blank row between botanical gardens and sky wheel. All right. So when you're dealing with a table, when you click into a table, um, notice how you get table tools, design, and layout tab. We're not going to need any of that for this question though. All right, what you want to do is hover with your cursor above the table until your cursor turns to a downward facing arrow. And I don't know if you can see my cursor in the video. I hope you can. I know you can when I click on things, but I don't know if you can when I hover on things. All right, you can also do this um, another way. You can just kind of click and drag the rank column. All right, and it says delete the column with the heading rank. So you're going to say right click and you're going to say delete column. OK, if you can't hover or you can't see my mouse to hover and select a column like this, then you can just kind of click and drag to select the column and delete it. All right. Add a blank row between botanical gardens and sky wheel. All right. So here's botanical gardens and sky wheel. We, we want this new row to go right here in between here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and um, select sky wheel. And again, you can hover your mouse over here. Whoop not that far there over here to the left of the table and if you click when the mouse is facing um, to the right you can select an entire row or uh, if you can't do that you can just click in here and drag and select the entire row all right so it just wants us to insert a new one so just like deleting a column uh, or a row we're gonna right click and we're gonna say insert split cells merge cells Oh, maybe we can't. Weird. I thought you could. Okay, well, we'll go to Table Tools Layout then, and we're going to say Insert Above right here. See where it says Rows and Columns, the Rows and Columns group right here? We're going to say Insert Above. All right, and we're going to do it one more time, right? At a Nope, just one blank row. All right, never mind. There's a version of the test where it has you doing two blank rows. It might have been an old version of the test. All right. Um... For all slide transitions, set the duration to three seconds and the sound to breeze. Okay, so transitions tab, set the duration to three seconds and the sound to breeze. So, eh. okay. It doesn't say to add a transition. There's no transition on, on this slide. Is there one on this one? Oh, you know what? You can tell if there's a transition on a slide. Let me go through this real quick. If there's a little sl uh, star below the number. So if I were to go ahead and um, let's go ahead and do this, um, you know, pick a transition. Doesn't matter. Any one you want. I like this one. I like the curtain. Let's do wind. Ooh, let's do fracture. These are all kind of there's some there's some new ones in here with uh, with uh, 2019, too. All right. That one's good. It's crush. I was at the paper thing. Yeah. Okay, let's do fracture. Let's keep it there. It says, for all transitions, notice how I have the star here under the number. When I when I do this to the rest of the slides, you're going to see the star apply to there, because what I just did was apply the transition to slide number one. For all transitions, set the duration to three seconds and the sound to breeze. So we're going to say duration 
three seconds, whoops, went too many times, and the sound to breeze. And then we're going to hit apply all and you're going to notice this little star goes to the rest of the slides and that's how I know I have a transition um, on those slides. So hit apply to all. Boom. There's my stars. See? Told you so. Um, and that's it. That's that whole question right there. There probably should have been a transition on that slide. You know, I might actually, uh, by the time you guys watch this, there might be one on there. I might go back and fix that and drop this back in there. On the handout master, ooh, so masters. Whenever I say master, slide master, handout master, notes master, we're gonna go to the view tab, all right? Under the view tab, you're gonna see master views group right here, and they want us to do a handout master. Change the left header to display first up consultants. So this one right here, we're gonna say first up consultants. Make sure you spell it correctly. Make sure that if it's capitalized in the question, that you capitalize it when you type it. And if it's not, don't. Whatever, however it looks, it needs to look the same. All right. Um, and the left footer to display firstupconsultants.com. www.firstupconsultants.com. Make sure you spell it correctly. First up consultants.com. On the test, there is a question that will ask you to do <clears throat> humongous car insurance. And the reason why my students miss it is because they misspell humongous. Nobody can spell that word. So you're going to say, um, once we're done with this, and I think we're done, you're going to say close master views. All right. And we come back to our actual presentation. What a handout master does is it, um, if you were to uh, print this, as a handout, you've just kind of modified the way that that handout would look. All right. So if I want to do, um, if you notice here, I have a handout section for when I print. I've now modified um, my handout for all of these layouts. So my footer for all of these, if I were to print it, is going to say something like, uh, you know, www.whateverfirstupconsultants.com. Um, all right. So that's what you just did there. It doesn't actually affect um, the presentation itself. All right, just if you were to print it. Number 40. After the title slide, insert a summary zoom slide. Ooh, this is a new one. This is a new one for 2019. So after the title slide right here, in between slides one and two, insert a summary zoom slide that links only to slides two and three. Insert tab. It's a link. In the links group, you're going to see a new thing called zoom. All right, and you're going to say summary zoom. And we're going to do slides two and three. And we're going to say insert. Isn't that cool? All right. When you're presenting, you can zoom to your selected content and then return to the summary. Try it out in Slideshow. See how you can interact with it. All right. Um, and if you haven't done all that stuff yet, if you haven't played around with it, it's kind of like Prezi. It just allows you to kind of zoom in and then zoom back out to the slide instead of going to the next slide. It's kind of cool. If you haven't done that yet, go ahead and do it. I'm not going to do it while I'm recording. After the title slide. Oh, that's what we just did on slide two. Set the background at a hands image from files. Okay, so um, in Office, in my uh, the files I sent you, you'll see something called hands, and you need to download that. If you haven't already, make sure you do. I think I did. We'll find out. I'm going to go to the Design tab. All right, we're going to go to Format Background, and we're going to use a picture. It's automatically going to put a texture on there, so you actually have to go here and say Insert Picture. You're going to say Browse File and we're going to go to wherever it is I downloaded that thing. Hands. Hmm, let me find it. All right, it says I didn't download it, so let's see if it's there now under the Downloads folder. There it is. All right, so we're going to get an image here. We're not done. We've got to set the transparency of the image to 75. So you can either take the zoom, uh, zoom slider bar and try to hit 75, but it's a lot easier just to come over here and either um, select it and type it in or just hit the arrows over here. Remember, it's a time test, so you don't want to waste a whole lot of time playing around with stuff like that. All right. On slide three, change the text www.firstupconsultants.com to a hyperlink. Oh, it's down here. It's on slide four. Okay, so number 42, <clears throat> that's an error. That'll probably be fixed by the time you guys watch this. On slide four. 
change the text www.firstupconsultants to a hyperlink. Easy. So um, triple click to select it all at the same time, or you can just click and drag, but it's just more exciting to triple click it. All right. Um, and then under the insert tab, just the same place where you go to zoom links, you're going to see link and you're going to say hyperlink, insert link. Uh, a couple of things you want to make sure of, it says change the display to read contact us. So right here where it says text to display, you're going to write contact us. All right. And then down here where it says address, you're going to type in www.firstupconsultants.com. Um, and again, make sure you spell it right. It's all right. Okay. There you go. And that's how it should look. Again, it's not going to say first up consultants because you put the text to display as contact us. All right. All right. At the end of the presentation, which is right here. Okay. Let me pause. This is one of those things that my students get confused on all the time. We're, we're just going to insert some slides here. All right. But what it what it's asking you to do there's two different ways to do it and what it's asking you to do is insert slides from a file called niagarafax.docx which is a document file all right when you're inserting things from a document file it's a little different than anything else all right so check this out at the end of the presentation so we're going to click right here or you can click on slide four uh, we're going to click right here at the end of slide four and we're going to go to the home tab you can also be on the insert tab and you can say new slide but it's also here under the home tab so new slide and because it's a document we're going to say slides from outline all right why because outlines are documents all right so pretty much anything um like with rtf rich text format dot doc um anything that is a document or a word type file or a word document um, you would say slides from outline all right if they want you to insert a new slide and it has ppt after it like if it said niagarafax.ppt then you would say reuse slides why because ppt stands for powerpoint all right that means you're reusing a slide from an already existing powerpoint presentation I hope that makes sense because I don't think we're doing reuse slides in this little review, but I'll set one up for us to use. So we're going to go to slides from outline. We're going to try to find Niagara Facts right here, Niagara Falls Facts. Oh, it, just, it does say Niagara Falls Facts, not Niagara Facts. Let me fix that too. And uh, what we're going to do is just double click it. And I don't know what this is. Let's see. Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's four slides that give you facts about Niagara Falls. That's amazing. Oh, and look at that. That's the end of this presentation. And um, this is the end of part five. So we're going to go to part six here, and we're going to pick this up with number 44. All right. So...